Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com. Today we're taking a quick look at and installing the MMD styling bar in the charcoal finish available for the 94-04 convertible Mustang. You should be taking a look at this for your own drop top new edge if you want that aftermarket styling to your convertible. This isn't going to be for everyone, of course. If you have a convertible, you might like the look of the styling bar. Some of you guys might not. Some of you might actually want some that incorporate a third brake light. This one does not, but it still gives you that aggressive styling to that convertible, which otherwise doesn't really have a lot of complimentary aftermarket parts. If you have that rag top, you can put this down and still have that nice aftermarket styling to cruise around town in. Now, if you're out and about with the top down and you have this thing open, it does have a nice weather resistant urethane vinyl wrapped around it with that charcoal finish to blend in perfectly with your interior charcoal materials. This also has a tubular steel core wrapped with a molded foam to give it that nice shape. It really does hug the body lines. It looks like it belongs on the convertible, in my opinion. Now, again, it's a hit or a miss. Some of you guys really might like it. Some of you guys might not. If you do like the look of this for your own new edge, you can get it for just about 320 bucks. The installation here is going to be a little bit labor intensive. I'm going to give it a harder two, bordering on three out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. Now, without further ado, I want to show you how it gets done. Tools used for this install are a drill and a drill bit set, hole saw kit, ratchet, extension, 18 millimeter deep socket, T20 and T45 torque spit, hole punch, Allen key, putty knife, flathead screwdriver, panel removal tool, rivet gun, and safety glasses. Now the first step of the installation here is to get our rear seats up and out of the way. We're gonna do that in two sections. We're gonna pop off the bottom cushions first and then they'll give us access to the two bolts holding on our top cushions. The first bottom cushions here don't have a bolt holding them into place, but instead just retaining pins under the dead center. Now, if you reach your hand up underneath here, you'll feel that push. You can push up and lift it. Do the same thing on the opposite side and then pop them all out. All right, now the two bolts we're gonna remove, one is gonna be on each side. You can see this is the bracket here holding on the factory upper cushions for your rear seat. So we're gonna pop this off and then do the same on the other side. Next step here is to lift up on your rear seat cushions to pop it out of the retaining clip on the top end. You'll feel that come out. Do the same thing on the other side and then pull it all out in one piece. Get those seat belts out of the way and set these aside. On the inside of where the seat belt sat, you'll see two panel trim pins or push pin clips. Those are gonna need a panel trim removal tool. Flathead screwdriver also does the trick. This just makes your life a little easier. You'll sneak it in underneath and pry up on it. Set these aside to be reinstalled later. All right, we also have one of those just tucked back here so you can pop that off as well. All right, now repeat that for the other side. Next up, grab a T45 Torx bit and remove the lower portion of your seat belts. Of course, you want to retain this to be reinstalled later. Do the same thing on the opposite side. All right, the next step here, if you open up your door on both sides, you'll see this weather stripping connecting the body panel to that trim interior panel. Grab your trim removal tool or your flathead and pop these two plastic pins out. You wanna keep the weather stripping attached to the body of the vehicle, but not to the interior trim. All right, now we can do the same thing on our driver's side. Of course, make sure you're retaining these pins and everything you're removing to be reinstalled at the end. Next up, we're gonna be removing our speaker grills. Now you just take a flathead screwdriver, put that in between and gently pry up on it. You'll see that it starts to pop the plastic clips out of place.
Repeat the same thing for the other side. All right, your next step here is to pry up on your door sill plate. This has been removed before, so it's popped out a little bit easier, but you can use a flathead to pry up on it and just set it aside. Now from here, you should be able to pry up on this trim panel and pop the whole thing out of place. Make sure everything is free, feed that seat belt through and set the entire trim panel aside. Repeat this on the other side as well. So we finally got our driver's side and passenger side trim panels out. Now it's time to do a little bit of drilling and a little bit of cutting. So what you want to have on deck is a drill and your hole saw kit. You want a one inch hole saw bit and later on we'll need a one and three quarters inch bit. But for now, the one inch will do just fine. You also want to have a center hole punch. This will keep your drill right on target and in the center. So we're going to use this first. You want to make sure you have that template printed out, which is included for you in the kit. If you have to print it out yourself or if you screw the first one up, you want to make sure you're printing it to scale. Next up here, we have it taped in place. We're working on our driver's side trim panel first. As you can see, the templates are side specific. It does say driver's side right on there, so you want to make sure you've got this on the correct side. I'm using painter's tape here to tape it down just so it doesn't leave any adhesive. Using gaff or duct tape can leave a little bit of stickiness behind. We have it set in place. You want to use that outer edge of the trim panel as your guide. It's got two holes marked on the template, and if you flip that over, you can see the two holes we took off of our weather stripping. So, you wanna make sure all of that is lined up. It's got the speaker cutout. Now, the speaker cutout is just a little bit off-centered here, at least on my template, it's a little bit off-centered, so you wanna make sure you're going by the edge here to give you a nice level playing field. You also wanna make sure the bottom of the template is centered and straight with the divide in your trim panel. So once that's all set up, take your center hole punch and mark the dead center of the crosshairs in each of the circles that you'll be cutting out. Once you have the center hole punched out, you can remove the template. The next step here, we're actually gonna take our drill and our drill bit included with our hole saw socket set and use this bit without the socket, the hole saw socket installed into place. So we're gonna drill that pilot hole out completely Back this bit all the way back out, and then we're gonna throw on the hole saw. So first things first, let's drill that pilot hole. All right, next up, we're gonna use our one inch hole saw to open this hole out. All right, so now that we have the first round of holes drilled, we have to move on to the second round of holes. Now these should be our final, about the final holes that we're gonna drill unless we need to make adjustments later. So next up here, we've got our second round of templates. We've got it taped on to our trim panels. You're gonna use the same passenger and driver side trim panels. As you see, we've got our first round of holes here. This is gonna go upward a little bit where it curves around from the side of your speakers to the top. Now, as you can see, the holes are pretty close together, and we are jumping up to a one and three quarters inch hole saw. So it is pretty big of a hole that we're drilling. These will intersect once we have both of them drilled, and then we're gonna take a small sawzall and cut straight across to make them one smooth oval. So that's gonna be really easy to do, and I'll show you that, guys that in just a second. That part is actually optional. You can leave these as two individual holes, although they will intersect. I'll show you that in a second, but first off, we're gonna take our center punch and mark the center of these holes. We can pop our template off. We're gonna start off drilling with just our bit here and then we're gonna later on add that one and three quarters inch hole saw. So first off, you wanna make that pilot hole. We're gonna go in right where we marked our center punch and drill through. All 
All right, so now that we have our one and three quarters inch hole saw bit on our drill, we can drill out these holes. All right, now we can drill that second one, and again, they will intersect. All right, now we can just clean up the holes, oval that out, and again, that is optional. You can leave them as two separate independent things, but because they intersect, it looks a lot cleaner if you just smoothen this out. All right, now the cutting and drilling is out of the way on our trim panel here, so grab your flathead screwdriver, and right where we made that oval cutout here at the top, we're gonna pull off the plastic connecting panel. We don't need this trim here with that metal clip attached to it, so grab a flathead, pry up underneath of it, and we're gonna pop that whole thing off. Do the same thing for the other trim panel. Next up here, we're back in the vehicle. We're gonna remove the two bolts holding on our speaker. Now, you're gonna take a T20 Torx bit and remove the one inside of your door trim, and the other one is gonna be up top here. So a T20 Torx bit will do the job and get these off. So we're just gonna shuffle this over to the side. You don't actually fully have to remove that. You just want access to this as a clean panel without anything in the way. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now you're working on the inside of your B pillar. There's two brackets included in the kit, one marked L and one marked R. The L is your driver's side bracket and the R is your passenger side bracket. You wanna use L, driver's side, to mark the hole on your passenger side. They're complete opposites, so you wanna use that to mark each opposite end. L, mark the hole on the passenger side. So we're gonna hold this up. Once they're fully installed, they'll be almost flush against the inside of the B pillar but since we're working on the opposite side just to mark the holes here, you're gonna leave just a little bit of room at the top of this circle and just have it showing on the left side. From here, take a hole punch right in the center there and mark your hole. All right, next up, you're gonna grab your drill and a 1 8 drill bit and drill out those pilot holes. Once the 1 8 out of the way, we're gonna bump up to a 3 8 and then a three quarters. So first things first, the pilot hole with the one eighths. All right, next we're bumping up to a three eighths drill bit and then we'll do a three quarters drill bit. All right, now we can bump up to a three quarters. In order to secure the brackets to the body, you'll place it behind the holes you drilled and use a rivet gun to secure it. Having a friend help you out can make the job a little easier and you wanna make sure you repeat this for both sides. All right, now it's about time we start putting things back together inside of our O3 GT. What we're gonna start by doing is putting this plastic trim on that had that black RTV sealant. You can see it's got some push pins. They're gonna have to go back in their original location. And you just wanna give it a good press all the way down to give it a good seal against the RTV that we didn't scrape off from before. Once that is back in place, we can start to reattach our speaker. All right, from here, we're gonna go get our interior plastic trim, throw that back into place, feed our seat belt through it. We'll bolt that down in just a little bit. From there, we'll reattach our speaker grills. All right, with our passenger side plastic trim here, we're gonna feed our seat belt through first, and that can go straight through one of our speaker holes. 
from there that'll feed right up this little slot back into its position. All right, now for our bottom speaker, as you can see, when we took it off, there was a little bit of adhesive or some glue around each of the tabs. We're gonna replace some of that. Just put a little dab on each of the tabs, and then we'll snap it back into place. All right, now we can put back those two pushpin clips from behind our rear seat cushion. All right, now we can replace the two push pins on our weather stripping by our B pillar. But the last step here on our passenger side is our door sill plate. Once we have this on, just repeat the entire process for the driver's side. The next step here is to actually put our styling bar into place. Now it's not very hard, you're just gonna lift it up slide it through each of the holes that you cut into your interior trim, and it's gonna go all the way down your B-pillar. Let it seat as far down as it possibly can go, but don't push too far on it. Once it goes through, you'll be able to bolt it up using the hex bolts provided in the kit as well as the spacers. Those will go through the two holes that you drilled on the B-pillar side. That'll go through into the brackets that are inside the vehicle already. So, first things first, let's lift this up. We're gonna slide it into one end of the holes. And now, what it might take you to do is to pull back on the other end to get it to fit into the other hole. Slide that down, get it to seat, and now we'll grab our bolts and see how it lines up. All right, once you have your styling bar dropped into place, you're gonna put your hex bolts provided in the kit as well as the spacers through the open holes that you cut out of your B-pillar on the trim, going through the bracket on the styling bar all the way to the bracket that you riveted to the body itself. So we did that here, you're gonna repeat on the other side, and then you're gonna take your black plastic caps and cap off these open holes. Those will snap right into place, top and bottom. Once that's taken care of, move over to the other side, repeat the exact same thing, and then you can move on to putting your seats back into place. Throwing the rear seats back in, really not that hard. We're gonna start with the back cushions first, so we can bolt it down below where the rear bottom cushions would sit. So we're gonna lift this up into place. And of course you wanna make sure you're feeding the seat belts over top. And seat the bracket down over the stud. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, now we can put our 18 millimeter bolt back into place. We're gonna thread that over the stud. You can thread it as far down as you can by hand and make sure you're lifting up on the bracket or on the seat itself to lift the bracket and then tighten it down. I repeat for the other side. All right, now we can throw in our bottom cushions. Now this is a little bit more difficult because you have to make sure you're feeding up the seat belt harness through the open slots in the cushion. Feed one up through, do the same thing for the other one. All right, once you have them all the way through, lower it down into place and snap it onto the retainer pins. All right, now you're good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install of the MMD Styling Bar and the Charcoal Finish for 99-04 Convertible New Edge Mustangs. There is one more thing I wanna point out before we get going. This is in no way, shape, or form meant to be any roll bar of any kind. This does not add any real chassis support, so if there were ever to be a rollover incident, this is not gonna act as a roll cage or roll bar or harness bar. This is simply just an exterior and interior, in some ways, styling part. With all that said and done, if you wanna pick up the styling bar and the charcoal finish from MMD, you can do so right here at AmericanMuscle.com.